I got you. Are you going to help me with the wood, right? Yeah. Just don't lift it too hard. Am I heavy, Papa? No, not at all. All right, you want to start putting some wood in here? I can get it. Oh, yeah. I'll put it. All right. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm Connor Crickmore, and I moved from the city to the country to become a farmer and to explore that connection between my food and the natural world. I am passionate about growing. I not only grow for the community, but also for my family. When it's time for us to eat, I gather the ingredients from our family garden and around the farm. I then cook it at our barn. Follow along through that entire journey as I plant seeds in my garden, care for the plants as they grow, come with me on the final harvest and through the preparation of the family meal. Learn to grow and cook with simple methods, with the food you grew yourself. This is Seed to Play at Neversink Farm. Each episode we follow one vegetable from seed to harvest to play. And this time, it is a vegetable my family eats every day, lettuce. We all know lettuce is the base of many salads, but it is so much more. As the lettuce grows, I will be planting a beautiful and functional herb garden in the center of the family vegetable plot. And later, my friend Laura, who is a master forager, will be stopping by to show me and my son River what is growing wild around the farm. And hopefully we'll afford some wonderful greens to add to our lunch. After which, I will show you how I store my herbs so that I can enjoy those great flavors all through the winter. In the garden, moving from one crop to the next is sometimes hard work. I will teach you a great technique that I use that makes that task quick and easy. When the lettuce is ready to harvest, I'm going to gather the ingredients for a great meal. I'm going to cook down at the barn. Let's get to growing. So it's spring here at the farm and we're getting to work outside and today I'm doing lettuce and I brought my expert lettuce seeder with me today. Right Riv? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to dibble them. This time using a professional whole tray. Voila. I mean, look at that. I, that's what I do out at the farm. And one thing I do is I like to mix different types of lettuce. It just makes it easy because I like to plant a lot of lettuce, so I just mix all the different seeds in one container. Lettuce seed's really small, so pelleted seed just helps it, helps it roll off the fingers easy, helps you see that you planted just one. Because these, as opposed to other seeds, you don't want to be thinning them as much. Fantastic. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, cover lightly. Lettuce doesn't germinate at high temperatures. If you're trying to germinate this in the middle of the summer, and it's good to have a succession plant lettuce throughout the summer so you continue, get a continuous supply. What you can do is throw it in your basement or garage, uh, someplace that's a bit cooler, and you'll get really good germination. All right. You ready? We'll get them on the table in the prop house and we'll come back in three to four weeks and we'll plant them. Remember this tray that mm -hmm. we seeded? Look at it now. Yeah. Pretty good, not too bad. So do you know how to put them in? If I, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them right here on the corners of the square that I made, just like that. Mm -hmm. 
and then just gonna pull them out, stick them in a hole like that. River, which one's your favorite type of lettuce? The red one and that one too? Mm -hmm. Hey man, beautiful job. So what we'll do is we'll come back in three weeks and we'll check on it. Four or five weeks, they're gonna be uh, huge lettuce heads and uh, we're gonna cook something, right? Awesome. The herb section of your garden can be the funnest, prettiest, and most useful part of your garden because everything you cook you're gonna to come to the herbs and you're gonna be selecting herbs and they just make cooking so much better. Also herbs flower, many of them flower. And so they're just gonna look gorgeous. I'm gonna dedicate this part of the garden to herbs, all culinary herbs. And you know, the, the herb part of your garden can be the heart of the garden because some of the perennials and will last a long time. And it's also where you go every time you harvest your vegetables, you're gonna stop by the herb section because you're gonna find something wonderful to pair it with and just raise your cooking to another level. One of the staples of my herbs is gonna be chives. And these are actually somewhere else in the garden. And all I did was just dig them up and now I'm gonna move them so that they can be with all the other herbs. And this is a pretty herb as well because this is gonna have beautiful purple flowers that are edible as well and look great in salads. You want to split it into perennials and annuals so you have a place to keep regrowing your annuals. And a good thing to do is lay it out first. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to figure out what's going to go where. All right, so I laid it out kind of like how I want it. I have uh, rosemary, which gets big over here. Some flowers in the background, which is lavender. Thyme in the front, sage, which is going to grow forever and it'll probably have to be chopped back. Uh, chives, which again is going to grow for a long time, and oregano, which is going to grow for a long time. So I have those guys together. All right, I also grabbed some parsley from the prop house, which I seeded 10, 12 weeks ago, and they're ready to go out. And that's going to be the beginning of my annuals, is the chamomile and the parsley. Right, these things are gonna be pulled out every year and replanted. And the rest of it, we're gonna have uh, cilantro and dill, and those are soon to be planted out. Okay, so it's been about three weeks since we planted these seedlings and maybe seven weeks since we uh, seeded our trays. And it's been cold, so they've grown slowly, but the quality is unaffected. They don't mind the cold so much. They just stop growing at about, you know, under about 55 degrees, they stop growing. But it's starting to warm up, and so we should have some great lettuce heads in about three weeks. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fertilize these, cultivate it in, and then I'm going to plant the next batch because lettuce is a great thing to just keep planting so you have lettuce all summer long. So you're probably wondering about this uh, tool right here. This is a tool I made for spacing out plantings around the garden.
My friend Laura is coming by and she is a master forager. And so she's gonna grab a bunch of wild greens for a salad. So even though we don't have our full lettuce heads ready yet, we can use these baby heads and that'll be my uh, contribution to a really great lunchtime salad. How you doing? Good, how you doing? All right. Can we get some watercress? I would love to get some watercress. River, are you gonna come with no shoes? Yes. All right. Perfect, you can go in because the watercress likes wet feet. So I think the, um, the best place to harvest it is probably gonna be right here. See it growing right here? This is it. Watercress is in the brassica family, so it has that delicious, sharp, pungent flavor. You can cook it or eat it fresh. And the flowers are actually quite delicious too, but as soon as the plant flowers, the leaves become a lot more bitter and strong tasting. So this is a good time to get it. A lot of fun hanging out with Laura and checking out what is edible around the farm. There were a lot of stuff, uh, but what I was most excited about was the watercress. And the watercress is, you know, it's a little leggy and so it's a bit spicy, so it's perfect to add to our baby lettuces that we just harvested. And to that, I'm just gonna add a little crunch with some baby turnips from the farm little onion from the chive and top it off with a couple of edible flowers. These actually taste really good. I know it makes the dish look a little uh, bit much, but my wife Kate grows these edible flowers. They're beautiful and, and hey, why not? To the dressing, toss and serve. What a treat seeing all the edible veg growing wild around the farm. I can't wait to dig in. So a nice beautiful afternoon salad just using what's on hand just like Laura was talking about in the forest that you know the forest is going to let you know what's available that it's going to let you know what you're going to cook just like your garden does just what's there, what's available, if it's young, uh, ready to eat, just what you have and throw it together and just keep it simple. That's what I like to do, I just like to keep it simple. During the main season, you just don't have enough time to use all the herbs, or at least I don't. So I like to save some for the winter, save some for when I don't have them. And one great way to do that is to dry them. And the herbs that dry the best are the ones that are gonna be perennials rather than annuals. Uh, so we have something like uh, sage works really well, thyme, rosemary, mint, oregano, and uh, this is uh, chamomile, uh, which where, where I'm at is not a perennial, but dries very well for tea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna harvest these up and uh, then I'm gonna show you how to tie them and dry them. And it's really, really simple. All the senses are made happy in a task like this. The fragrance of all these different herbs is just wonderful. I can imagine the dishes throughout the winter that can be enjoyed while watching the snow fall and planning next year's garden. Planning the garden is really about planning the meals you will be cooking next season.
All right, now that I have all my herbs cut, uh, laid out, taken out, anything that uh, doesn't look so nice, I'm gonna put them into small bundles and just tie them with a string. And the smaller the bundle, the quicker it's gonna dry. Uh, so you don't wanna make your bundles too big. After I tie them into the small bundles, then I'm going to hang them. Hang them for a few days, and then once they're completely dry, we're going to dry them up. Alright, so something you do in the garden all the time is you, you harvested a bed or maybe the bed rotted or maybe uh, you had some problem or uh, you had crop bolt or something or there's just too much of it and you, you know, you're thinking about composting it. What I'm going to show you is a really easy way to turn over your bed from one crop to the next crop really easily without having to you know, take everything out of it and do anything uh, that's really strenuous. All right, so here we have a lettuce bed. It's starting to bolt. It's a bit too much of it for me. So I'm just gonna make sure that they're, you know, disconnected from the ground. I'm just gonna pull the roots out. And then I'm gonna cover it with some fertilizer, some compost, finished compost, as well as just some compost from the kitchen. Right, just got eggshells, coffee grinds, that kind of stuff. And then I'm gonna cover it and we're just gonna let it sit for a few weeks. And we'll come back together and we'll go check it out and we'll see what happens. So it's been a couple of weeks since we hung the herbs and now they're really dry. So to preserve them for the rest of the winter, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put them in jars. That's what we're gonna do, right? This is, this is chamomile. If you wanna do chamomile, what's so funny? Chamomile. Chamomile's a tea. We have chamomile tea. But it's a flower. So we're taking the tip, just, just the, just that yellow part. You pinch it off and put it in the jar, and that's for chamomile tea. And then this is sage, and I can just take the whole leaves and stick them in and then just cram them in there. Now we can use herbs from the garden all winter long when we're cooking, and when you're cooking. We're, uh, dry, we're putting the dried herbs into the jar. You want to help? Yeah. All right. Here's the jar. Mm, I want to pick the channel I do. You can do the rosemary. Perfect. Yeah. So what you're going to do is take the, the, the leaves off. Yeah, those small leaves, exactly. Ah. Look how much fell off with that leaf. Oh, that's for tea. Delicious tea. Let me just do that there. And I'll go in. Okay, all done. Perfect. 
been a couple of weeks since we put the compost and rotten lettuce heads and all the rest of that goodness we put under this plastic and so now we're going to take a look and see what's happened over that time. So everything is just rotted down, right? There's a few eggshells left, but nothing to get in your way. And now all we need to do is smooth it out and get to planting. So it's been about nine weeks since we put a seed in a tray and started our lettuce. And then it was about five weeks ago, uh, five, six weeks ago that we planted it into the ground. And we've been checking on it and it's been doing fa fabulous. We can see we have beautiful large heads, but we can't wait any longer because you can see they're just getting going to start to bolt if we don't get them out of the ground and make a beautiful dinner with them. And I noticed on the way here, we got beautiful snap peas. So I'm gonna make a nice snap pea and uh, dish with uh, what I'm cooking. So I'm gonna harvest some of that. I'm gonna get some shallots. I'm gonna make a salad with uh, some kohlrabi. There's just some um, tomatoes peeking through. So I'm gonna grab some of those and I'm gonna get a little bit of celery. The celery is just starting. So I'm just gonna get a little baby celery. I find lettuce to be the rawest connection with the garden. Maybe because it is so fast and easy to grow that me and my kids are intimately involved in the entire cycle. And my kids can't get enough of it at dinner time. Lettuce may be the start of the salad, but look at all this bounty that I can add to it. All right, so we're here after it was the nine week journey of planting that seed in the tray, then transplanting it with my son River, watching after it, and now we're gonna cook with it. And I'm gonna make two things. I'm gonna make a wonderful big salad, right? One of the great best things to do with lettuce, obviously, with other great stuff from the garden, some kohlrabi and uh, celery and the tops of shallots. And then I'm gonna cook up some chicken with peas from the garden and shallots and I'm going to cook that up on the grill and it's going to be awesome. Get everything in a bowl, lettuce, chopped chives, and thinly sliced kohlrabi. No need to be scared of kohlrabi. It's wonderful, sweet, and crunchy. Then I add some quartered cherry tomatoes, a must at this time of year. I whip up a quick dressing of lemon, oil, salt, pepper. Dress the salad and top with shavings of Parmigiano Reggiano. Oh yeah. All 
right, just finished the salad, big salad. My family loves salad, especially my kids. And now I'm gonna make something else with lettuce. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grill it. And I think, why would you grill lettuce? But it's really good. It's so simple, so easy. It just makes it so nice. It's just a different thing that you can do with lettuce that makes it wonderful. And that's gonna go with chicken, some snap peas, some shallots, and I'm gonna cook the uh, chicken with butter and a little uh, oregano. Get the chicken grilling and butter while I chop some young shallots and get them into a skillet with the sugar snap peas and butter. Leave all that goodness to cook. for the star, the grilled lettuce. You need to watch these and pull them off the grill just as they brown and wilt. chicken and peas. Then I had chopped oregano to top the entire dish. So for a garden vegetable, lettuce is quick and easy, but that's what's so nice about it, is that it's early in the season and we're already making meals. And that's so awesome. And it doesn't need to be something that's plain. You can do so many things with lettuce. I mean, it was only nine weeks or so since we got that seed in the tray. Then we took that tray and planted with the family into the garden. And as you know, we just kept planting lettuce so that we're gonna have lettuce all season long so that we can have a salad with every meal. Cause that's what I love. I love having a salad with every meal. So cheers. While we finish up our meal, why don't you head over to neversinkfarm.com for more information on growing your own vegetables. Come down, come down, sweet reverence. Until my simple house and rang and rang.